Hello and welcome to today's brand breakthrough show. I am getting a message here. Try another way of going live during your broadcast. Okay, so new things, new things happening. <laughs> so today we're going to focus on a really awesome topic. I am very juiced about today's topic because we're going to focus on different ways that I drive free traffic, totally free traffic to my website and I don't pay for any advertising. I never have. I don't, I've never desired to pay money on things that I don't need to and so I don't want you to pay for them either. Siraj, hello Angie, hello. Um, I don't know um, how I get rid of this uh, thing. Oh, there we go. Ah, okay. <laughs> right, now you are, am I on my side? Because... <laughs> Now all the comments are going right the way across. So I seem to be the right way up. Uh, hello. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Uh, yeah, so Liza's on. We've got Siraj. Okay, so I'm kind of going sideways to read your comments. This is fun today. Uh, yeah, am I the right way up or is this showing me? Uh, yes, you are sideways. Okay, awesome. So let's turn you this way and I'm going to take you out of my bracket and place you down here instead. Okay, this seems to be doing some funky things today. Got me. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so yes. Very excited for today's uh, show. So let me just uh, get my notes up here because I have been brainstorming for you to find out um, what are the ways that I'm driving traffic that I'm doing so naturally that I don't even think about. And it was really good um, yesterday or the day before, time is flying so fast, I asked the question, what do you want me to create these shows on? Because I want to make sure this content is totally developed around what you need and how you need help and <laughs> what are the topics that you want me to speak on and you know I can always bring in other speakers as well to support with this. Uh, Vicky hello and so uh, today I'm answering Susan's question. Susan put four different things she wants me to speak on so I've organized those topics. Tasha hello long time no see I was on with Tasha we got some exciting stuff that we're planning so watch out keep your eyes peeled because uh, Tasha and I are creating creating some very, very fabulous, awesome money generating products. And uh, we've got some exciting stuff, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, so today we really are, um, we're going to focus on what ways you can increase your web traffic for free. And if you've got any questions or you have any other topics that you want me to cover, please put them in the comments with this video because I want to make sure that, that we provide support for you in the way that you need it. Look now, I can see your photos on here as well. Hello. Um, so here are the ways that I generate that traffic. And I really, um, I just advise that even if you, you're, you're probably doing some of these already, but if you're not doing them enough, if you're not doing them at least once a week, then these things are um, like massively wasted opportunities for your business. Um, especially if you are paying for advertising at the moment. I just, I wanna remove that cost for you because these things are just no brainers. So, um, and Saskia's here as well. Hello, Saskia. So, the first one, the first one is, it like, by the way, all of these 15 things that I'm going to cover with you today are really super simple and they are not rocket science. So the first thing that I'm going to advise that you do or do more of if you're doing it already is guest interviews. So how can you get more interviews with influencers who have your ideal customers as part of their network. So I want you to right now, just write down five, five influencers you know who have your ideal customers in their network that they're blogging to or that they're speaking to, delivering Facebook Lives to, delivering webinars to, delivering seminars, workshops. You get the picture, right? So who, what five influencers do you know that you can list right now who if you were to um, do an interview for in front of their audience, you would get an enormous amount of traffic to your website. Hello, Craig. Especially if you're driving them to something that is free, that doesn't cost them anything, but they just, or, or give them something that they text and then they download it or they get it, they get access to it. Um, but just think about 
how you can do that. And likewise, interviewing other thought leaders as well. So make it a two way thing. If you reach out to thought leaders and say, hey, I'd really love to get in front of your network. Um, how do we do that? Not very appealing. But if you reach out to them and say, hey, I, I really would love for us to collaborate. I've got your ideal clients in my network and you've got my ideal clients in your network. There must be a way that we can cross collaborate here and support each other to uh, achieve greater impact. Um, through the power of collaboration. So you reach out to somebody, I've, I've never said no to somebody that's reached out to me from that energy. So just think about that in your own business. But now you've got those five people written down, make a, a conscious to do this week, if not right after this, right? Because I've got another a huge amount of things that I'm going to talk to you about tonight. So don't do it right now. But as soon as you get off of this broadcast or tomorrow, start reaching out to those people and finding out how you can cross collaborate, how you can get in front of their audience and how they can get in front in front of yours. Um, and the other thing is when you're when you're interviewing key people of influence that have, um, you know, many, many people in their following, when you're interviewing them, it's likely they're going to tell all of their network about it to come across and come to your group, for example. So it's a really great way of you really boosting traffic to your website. Um, the third thing, webinars and Facebook Lives. So we're obviously talking on Facebook Live right now. Um, we don't do a great deal of webinars. We maybe do three or four webinars a year uh, because we do most of our stuff is live stream. But webinars, again, you could look at webinars as Zoom calls, for example. So you don't necessarily have to deliver a webinar. It could be a Zoom call where you just deliver it like a conference call. We deliver much of our training in that way. You invite people to come and attend and you, you add value, you provide value. They can ask questions. The great thing about Zoom is that they can ask live. Whereas on a webinar, you, you tend to be talking to a screen and, and hoping that everyone can hear you because it's... <laughs> It can be a bit odd when you're when you're doing that. But webinars really are a great way of you really maximizing the potential of your brand expanding into many, many different parts of the world without you having to physically be there. But also, if you want to, um, those of you that are in the Brand Builders Club, Dennis Janssen, one of our members from Holland, last week, he just literally finished delivering a five-day sprint with a 90-minute masterclass on how to really maximize your impact using webinars. So webinars are a brilliant way of you really uh, creating impact, inspiring people. So who do you desire to inspire? Who do you really wanna make that impact on? And, and just think about how you could get onto other people's webinars as well. So Nancy Matthews, a few months ago, delivered, hi Jasmine, uh, delivered a brilliant um, webinar which was for her clients. It wasn't for an external network, it was just for her customers. I think the, these customers are on her illumination program. And so she delivered this, this webinar and I was the guest speaker at this webinar and the whole thing that I did was all around content strategy. And so I delivered an hour of free content. So they didn't pay anything, she didn't pay anything. Um, I didn't sell anything, but what I did was I added massive value. Hi, Peggy Lee. I added massive value on that webinar so that when I went out, for example, to uh, Orlando last month at their unconference, tons of people in that room already knew who I was. So I, I wasn't going in there fresh. They did, you know, it, it wasn't like nobody knew me. I was going in and, and I already had brand credibility in the room, which made it so much easier to make sales while I was in the room. So also think about what events are coming up that these key people of influence that you, you think would be great partners, what events are they running? And is there a way that even if you're not speaking at that event, is there a way that you can add some value to them and their network so that when you attend the event, everybody knows who you are? It might be that when you sign up for an event, you get access to a free Facebook group, for example. Could you create a little series in there that supports the topic that they're going to the event for, doesn't sell anything and just adds value? Just think about some of the things you've got coming up. For example, we run our, our Brand Builders Club members days in at least five locations every three months. So if you're attending one of those Brand Builders Club days, 
it would be a really good thing for you to create some added value content, put it into this group, for example, in the, the How to Build a Brand group or in the Brand Builders Club group if you're, in the, if you're a Brand Builders Club member, so that you're front of mind. You'll be one of the first people that everybody wants to go and talk to because they'll have done your sprint or they'll have seen your videos. So just think about how you could do that um, in a way that really adds value to the net networks that you're gonna be hanging around in. Something that I did um, along this li these lines, um, I don't know if you know Laurel Langemeyer, but we were at her wedding a couple of years ago. And because the wedding was in Lake Tahoe, uh, in Canada. So, uh, no, it wasn't Lake Tahoe. <laughs> I met her in Lake Tahoe. We were in Banff in Canada. And, um, and so Laurel said, you know, we, I've got people that are flying in from all over the world for, for my wedding. Um, so I've created a group and added you to the group because you might want to share a car or, you know, meet up at the airport and drive across because it was a couple of hours from the airport in uh, Calgary to get across to Banff. And so there were like, I don't know, 60 people in this Facebook group. So, hi Alex, hello Sean. So, so I go into the Facebook group, I did a little video introducing myself, said I'm coming across from England, I can't wait to meet you all. So excited for Laurel and Jason getting married, let's make this amazing day for them. Um, you know, and I just did a, a friendly video, I didn't advertise myself, didn't say what I did, I just introduced me, as me. And then, I sent a little message, hi Sheila, I sent a little message out to um, to everybody in the group, when you go into a group you can send a message, again I didn't spam them, I said, uh, you know, hi I'm Sammy, I see you're going to be at Laurel and Jason's wedding, um, I can't wait to meet you, just thought I'd reach out so I know a few people before I get over there because I don't know anyone in Canada yet. Um, and it made such a difference. I did the same thing when we were going out to New York to launch the Brand Builders Club in New York last week. Whenever I know that I'm going to an event, I will request to be a member of that group of the event if there is a group for the event. And I'll make uh, it my mission to reach out and start... Um, Hello, Sean. Start talking to people before I even get there. So it's a brilliant way of driving free traffic to your website because as soon as you start reaching out to people, what are they going to do? They're going to search for you. They're going to find out who you are. Especially if you're on Facebook, they can go to your profile. Make sure in your profile you are specific about what you do. If you go to my profile on Facebook, you'll see that it's Sammy Blindell and I say something along the lines of, you know, speaker, author, brand expert. Um, adventurer, you know, so I've put some stuff in there about me. So, you know, and, and make sure, uh, I think in there as well, I've put my, my websites in there as well. So just go and do that on your Facebook profile. LinkedIn isn't the only place that you should be putting your business stuff. Uh, you know, if you've got that, that business angle in what you do, go and do that. Hi, Lina, it's so lovely to see you. And um, go and, and make a point of, of doing that with your Facebook profile as well. Not so it's really businessy, but just a little explanation about yourself will tell people that are searching for you, what you do. And, and putting your, your web address there means that when you're contacting people, or especially if you're reaching out to strangers to convert them into friends, it's a way of that you know, like they're going to find out about you straight away. So send them to your website. This is all about getting free website traffic. Yeah. So building relationships and building trust is enormous as part of this strategy. Amanda, hello, beautiful. So um, okay, so we're up to uh, webinars on Facebook lives was what we were talking about there. Um, videos. Now, videos are a brilliant way of you really getting out. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. Um, really getting out your message and and making an impact on people. But the, the challenge that I see is that so often um, your your videos are in YouTube or you post a video in Facebook, which is great because you want that publicity. But you want videos on your website as well. So a, a way of you driving lots of free traffic to your website and having um, almost, this is real Google juice. This is really, really good Google juice. Like if you're writing a blog, get that blog onto your website, but then create a video about that same topic, put it up into YouTube and stream the video into your blog. So, um, uh, Daniel, I'm great, thank you. It's lovely to see you. So when you stream that video into your blog, what's gonna happen is if you've got, if you've named that um, blog post and your video, 
for a really, really good keyword search term. So for example, once, uh, once this video is finished streaming, I'll get this up into YouTube and I'll call it how to create free website traffic because that's something that millions of people are searching for, all right? So I'll get this up into YouTube. I will then get it transcribed so I can turn it into a blog. And I, I for those of you that follow me quite a bit, I use rev.com, R-E-V.com. Maybe one of you could type that in for me so that you can help other people to, to know where to go to get transcriptions. Um, you know, and this is an hour transcription. So with rev.com, that will be a dollar per minute. So that's going to be $60 for this. But I guarantee I will get more than $60 worth of return on my investment because there are, well, there's 15 things that I'm going to talk about. Oh, thank you, Lubna. 15 different things I'm going to talk about on this video, which means I can put the whole video up onto YouTube, but I can also break it down into all 15 things. So now I've got 16 videos from creating one video and that transcription that I get could then be made into 16 different blog posts, right? So so you've got a whole, you could create a whole blog post, but then you could also break it down and just do a, um, a little feature. So then all you've got to do is add that little bit of extra content. But the real key here is to stream that YouTube video into that blog post. Because what happens is when someone types in um, how to drive free traffic to your website into Google, Google also owns YouTube. So if it's optimized for the same thing, you're gonna show up as a video and as a search result, you'll be in the search listings. So it's a really powerful way. This is not rocket science. This I'm not an SEO expert. I just know how to drive free traffic in a really easy and relaxed way. That There you go, that's for Tasha. Everything, easy and relaxed <laughs> and in a healthy and positive way, right? This is the very best way to take your content and duplicate the amount of times, multiply the amount of times that somebody can um, access that content and get access to you, more importantly. And the more you can drive people to your website um, in a free way, um, the more content you can create that you can break down and repurpose, the, the easier it's going to be for you and you won't pay for for traffic to get to your website right it's this is just this is really simple stuff so um guest blogging is also another brilliant way yes Taja guest blogging is also a really great way so I talked about uh, guest webinars earlier what about guest blogging so there's two ways that this can go okay so with guest blogging there's you writing for them but there's also them writing for you so you writing for them gets you out in front of a whole audience. Saskia Vandery is on this call right now. Saskia writes blogs for other people, right? If you don't have time to write your blogs or you want a case study done on your business um, from customers, Saskia reached out to a bunch of my customers. She wrote different blog post articles from the interviews that were created, and even though they could be repurposed in so many different ways. So uh, reach out to Saskia. If you haven't got time to do your own blogging, reach out to Saskia, and she can either train you how to do it in a really fast, easy and relaxed way, or she could do it for you, okay? So just make sure you've got that content going out. Your your, your content is the, the, the fuel in your engine, right? Imagine that your, your brand is the vehicle and your content, which is your marketing, is the fuel. And the engine needs to be fed constantly. If you want people to find you organically without having to pay a load of money on advertising, you want to be feeding that engine a you know, keep it going. Keep that heartbeat of your content getting out there and reaching more lives. Yeah, she's the blog, the blog queen. Um, so guess blogging. Um so you blogging on their um, sites is obviously a good thing because you're getting out in front of other people. But here's the great thing for you. When you have people blogging for you, you are adding content to your blog that Google is going to look at your website and say, hey, there's a lot of content being added here. 
loads of value, I'm going to increase your Google rankings because obviously you're adding super amounts of value to the customers that are finding you. So here you go, I'm going to give you some Google juice and it will boost you. So the more content you're adding to your website, the higher your website's going to climb and you'll stay in the search engines for much longer for, especially if you've got a lot of people that, um, if you're keyword research is uh, is really strong so you know what your keywords are you're naming your articles the exact things that customers are searching for in google but remember there's also there's yahoo there's bing there's other search engines as well so you, you want to get found all these different ways um yes yes so saskia um is getting a, a a good shout out there from tasha as well seriously she's amazing so um, guest blogging is great for you because you drive traffic to your website from Google. You'll have more people finding you. And to do that, by the way, it might be, for example, that you think about some of the topics that you want to cover in your blog or from your website. And, um, and they're topics that you don't necessarily have time to cover. Well, reach out to people that are non-competing with you. It's what uh, Trish calls um, co-opetition. Uh, so reach out to those people and see if they will write the articles for you. Even if you have, for example, um, well, here's a great example of how I've done this in my own business. So in the Brand Builders Club, every Monday, we have what's called Get Shit Done Monday. So they're GSD calls. So every Monday, um, we have a one hour call. It's the same time every week. It's the same uh, Zoom link. And, uh, and we got to the point where members had um, questions about certain things. And I reached out to Saskia and I said, hey, do you want to do one of the uh, Monday get shit done calls? Because, um, you know, I, I think it'd be great if we start adding 10 minutes, hi Matt, 10 minutes of value at the beginning of the call, followed by 50 minutes of get shit done. So the members, they all uh, dial in at the same time. They get 10 minutes of, of uh, training on, in Saskia's case, it's all around the messaging and, and the blogging. And then there's 50 minutes of if they've got questions, if they if they need answers, if they need support, there's 50 minutes of that. So I said to Saskia, how, you know, do you fancy doing that? She said, yeah, I'd love to. So I said, great, I'd love for you to do it the first Monday of every month. She said, brilliant. Okay, so now Saskia is adding value to my members. The videos, can, they're all recorded, so they can be transcribed, they can be turned into workbooks, and that boosts Saskia's brand to all of our Brand Builders Club members, but it also boosts the amount of content that we have going up on our website as well. So think about these strategies of how you can um, really maximize the way that people are driving this, that trust uh, currency is what you're really driving to your website. You're building trust and credibility, and it really does have a massive impact on your brand. Okay, so while we're talking about driving free traffic to your website, it is all boosting your brand. This is all connected to brand. And the more value you're adding to those people who are really searching for what you provide, the more they're going to love you, the more they'll trust you, the more credibility you have, the more they'll go and have conversations about you. Uh, hey, I read this great article today. Here's another great example. So Dina Mims, one of our Brand Builders Club members, in fact, she's the relationship manager for the Brand Builders Club in Florida. So Dina sends me an email today and says, hey, I saw this and thought of you. And it was a, um, a blog that she'd come across that was all around brand color and how important brand color is when you're building your brand. And I read through the article. I thought this is a great article. It didn't give it any, any information away, but it told you how important it was to make sure that your brand color is right. So she's then seen that blog. She's now shared it with me. When you create value, your brand gets shared. She has then driven me to their website because she's sent, seen something that is really potentially valuable to me. So again, like how can you do that? Uh, I love going for win-win ideas. Yes, absolutely, Saskia. I mean, it's just, it's, this is no brainer stuff, right? It is so simple. Um, okay, so guest blogging, we've done that. Blogs on LinkedIn. Remember that LinkedIn also has a blog function that you can use to drive people to your website. Hi, Gospel. So here's how I do it with mine. Um, so when we create a blog article, I take the top piece of that article, so about the first 
third of the article. I copy and paste it into LinkedIn as a blog. So if you've never done a blog on LinkedIn before, you just go to write as if you're going to write a post, but it'll give you the option. Do you just want to write a post? Do you want to write a blog? So look at the options that you have available to you on LinkedIn. So I copy and paste the top third into uh, LinkedIn and I put uh, to finish it or to, um, to, to read the rest of this article, um, click here and there's the link. Well, the link is to my website. So it's just another way that you can add that to your website. If you've got Instagram followers or Pinterest followers, whatever social channel you have the, the your highest, um, your clients are in the highest concentration on those networks. Again, you know, like Pinterest, for example, you can have a video up in YouTube, pin it to your Pinterest board. So you create your video, get it up in YouTube, pin it to your Pinterest board, and then um, to read the rest of the article, click here. Um, you know, I mean, I'm constantly on Pinterest because I'm a visual learner. So I'm always on Pinterest looking at things. And the demographics on Pinterest are really very interesting. Like, that It's mostly women on Pinterest. And yes, there's a lot of stuff that's, uh, you know, health related and um, crafts. But again, you know, if you're providing something to someone and those women are going to be on there, then you want to use that as a channel. Um, it's, it's a brilliant way of you getting, again, your brand in front of a high concentration of your ideal customers. Mary Frances, hello. I can't wait to hear about how your event went at the weekend. Uh, Saskia, great tip, Sammy Blindell, top paragraph of your blog in LinkedIn and give a click. Yeah, yeah. So um, it, it, we drive quite a bit of traffic to our website through doing that. And the other thing is that... Um, what you can also do if you're going on LinkedIn or on Facebook, for example, there are groups, there are forums that you can go into. And um, and here's a little trick that's off piste from what we're talking about, but it's something that uh, I need to do a lot more. This is, don't you always teach the thing you need to learn? <laughs> so I did this for ages and got really good results and then got really busy and haven't had time to do it, but I am gonna be doing it again. Here's my commitment. And I want you to be doing this too. So go onto LinkedIn or Facebook, uh, into a group where your ideal customers are hanging out in a high concentration, right? So go in, have a look at what they're talking about. What questions are they asking? What are they moaning about? What are they talking about? Um, and, and when you see a question, go and respond to it. So I, I just find that it's fastest to do it by video. So if I see a question that someone's asked, I jump on my phone, I say their name. So Saskia, I, I've just seen that you've asked a question in such and such group. So name the group that you're in, um, in the How to Build a Brand group. And, uh, and I, 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 I did, the, um, or I've got some experience in that, so I just thought it'd be quicker for me to create you a quick video uh, just to share how I got through that or what I did or what, I, what my clients do. So I do it was like 60 seconds or something. I upload it straight from my phone, straight into the comment of it. And now not only is the person who I've created that video for thinking, oh wow, that's awesome, you made a video for me. Every single person in that thread is also seeing that video. They're getting a notification that you've responded to that request or that, that comment and everybody in the thread sees it as well. Um, I did that on LinkedIn when I had my design agency um, I, I did that on LinkedIn and uh, I was getting a lot of business for my branding and design agency through using that very strategy. People that were asked, you know, I'm looking for a web designer in, uh, in Leeds. Can anybody recommend one? Well, everybody else was going, yeah, here's my web address. Here's my web address. I went on and said... Um, I'm so excited for you that you, this was a guy called David actually, who became our customer as a result of this. Um, David, I'm so excited for you. Congratulations, you're, you, you know, you're getting a new website. So obviously this is a, a great new phase for your business. I'm excited for you. And to make sure that you choose the best web designer for what you're doing. Hi, Peter. Hi, June. To choose the right web designer for your project, um, uh, here are 10 things that you need to consider to make sure that you don't waste your money. So I, I did like a little 10 step thing, maybe took me about 20 minutes to come up with the content idea, created it, I posted it, and not only did I win business from David, because he responded to me to say, oh my God, you know, your, your post was so helpful, thank you so much. 
um, I assume you've got some experience in this. I said, well, actually, it's what we do as a business. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you choose the right person. He said, well, when can I come and see you? I said, well, I'm available tomorrow. He comes down to my office. Um, not only did we do uh, the website for David, but I did all of his branding. We did all of his marketing. I designed his book covers. Um, I, I then coached him for two years. He got um, he started going into business with one of the people from Dragon's Den uh, on the telly. For those of you that are overseas, I think that is, um, is that Shark Tank or something? I think it's Shark Tank over in the States. Um, and so, you know, I, I coached him for a long time. I did at least 70 grand's worth of business from that one feedback, that one piece of feedback, me just being helpful, responding to a question that somebody put in a post on that was on LinkedIn. But you could apply the same principle when you see a question. If you see somebody asking for help, but rep respond by a video and, and upload it into the comment because it's like it's going to capture everybody's attention. The first thing they're probably going to do is go to your website and look you up if they don't already know you. And especially if you've got your website in your, your Facebook or LinkedIn profile so they can see you straight away, go and check you out. Again, it's free traffic and oh my gosh, so much business to be done there. Uh, create content that goes out into other people's courses, programs, workbooks, workshops, books. Uh, I talked about this last week, um, you know, on the Brand Breakthrough Show last week in terms of how to really build your uh, really great brand strategy. Well, by creating content that's going into other people's programs, other people's books, you'll get everywhere. For those of you that know Andy Harrington, I know there's a few of you that are on here that are part of Andy's network. Um, I spoke on Andy's stage about four years ago when he did a he did a, um, a two day event. I was one of the speakers at this event. Andy recorded that content. Um, he then got that up into his online resource, and I have got so many customers from that. And also because Andy has featured me in his book, I'm on page 80 something in his Passion into Profits book, um, I've got inquiries come from that. So, you know, I've, I've got people that have come through on my programs that have spent thousands with me as a result of me just appearing in Andy's book. So it was good for him because he filled his book with great content. It's good for me because... Um, even though I don't even need to sell anything in his book, he's demonstrating I've got a great business. So people are searching for me and they're finding that it's another way of driving traffic. Dragon's Den. Thank you, Saskia. Um, and that can work both ways as well. So if you have other people, for example, um, one of the ideas that we came up with for Kezia Luckett for her Women of Contribution when she was uh, creating her Pay It Forward book series, which uh, Lubna, and I can see some of you on this call right now that are in her next one, which is launching very soon. Very excited for you. Um, and so we said, you know, if you have 18 different people that are writing for this book, that's 18 different networks that are going to get to know about this product so by you inviting other key people of influence to either train on your courses and um, deliver content at your workshops um, you know write in your books create content that really makes a difference to your programs and your customers well it's adding value it's a triple win because it adds value to your customer it adds value to you and it adds value to them and they're going to share it with their entire network because you're now appearing on their product. Brilliant way of you driving free traffic to your website and your brand. Um, the other thing is optimize your images with your keywords. Don't just take your image. Hi, Andrea. Um, don't just take your image that is like IMG321Z or whatever as it comes off the camera and get it straight up into your blog or website. Call the file, the name of your images. Name it with the keyword that you want to be found for. Um, if I were creating a an image that was going to represent this um, uh, what this video, once I get this video up into YouTube um, and I get it into my website, if I've got a, um, a an image of this that then says uh, how to drive free traffic to your website, again, Google, people search images. I do it all the time. If I'm looking for something, I don't always just look at the, um, the search results. I'll click on images or I'll click on videos to find what I want really fast. And there's millions of people that are searching using the images feature. So it's another way of you showing up. If you've got the, the keyword that people are searching for in the name of your image that you're uploading to your website, 
people are going to find you. It's another way of finding you and driving free traffic to your website. So if you're putting images into your blog, make sure you name it the same as you've named the blog. And hopefully you will name that blog in a way that's got your keyword search terms in because it's a way of you, again, boosting that traffic to your website. So these things are really simple, aren't they? Give me a yes, yes, yes. If these are things that are simple that you can do, you're, you're already using all this stuff. I just want to make sure you're multiplying the ways that people can find you without you having to pay for it. And yeah, it's going to be a real ball ache for you to go through and do that through all your blog posts or whatever if you've, you've had that going for a while. But just even if you don't have time to go back historically and do that, just start doing it from now. Every time you take a picture and you're using it in your blog post, just make sure you keyword it before it goes up in there next time, okay? Just do that and make sure you're doing that with your videos as well. Awesome, getting some love and some yes, yes, yeses. Excellent. And Susan's here. Hello, Susan. <laughs> so, um, okay, next, email marketing. Email marketing is a brilliant way of driving people to your website. Yes, you've heard it a million times before. Are you utilizing the power of it is what I would say to you. So again, email marketing, just think like how could you do it differently? So maybe what you could do is uh, think about something that you could offer of value that people could put into their email signature strips. So you know every time you send an email, hopefully you have an email signature which has your website address in there and some key information. Email signatures are brilliant ways of driving people to your website because you might have a new offer. Maybe you've been nominated for an award. Maybe you've won an award. Maybe a new client has just won a $45 million contract as a result of the work that you did for them. You wanna be talking about that in your email signature. A bit like Google, you notice that Google changes every single day that you go to it, there's a different image. Get people used to seeing something different on the bottom of your signature strip so that they, they, they're they like, oh, what's this? This is a new thing. So you could make it graphical. You you know, sometimes images don't show up if you, um, if you, doing it in a way or using a program that has um, a high spam filter on it that might sh not show up necessarily but you can you can put wording there for sure and that wording will show up I regularly include a link to a blog post in my email signature brilliant Saskia it's a great way of you driving that but also think about again this comes into the guest blogging and the guest webinars and, and creating content for other people if you've got something that really will add value to 20 people that are in your network, get in contact with those influencers and say, hey, you know, I've, I've created this. Um, I've actually put your brand on it because I talk about you in the brand. It, I mean, this happens all the time. Um, I get um, I get people writing to me that say, um, uh, I've read your blog post on XYZ and I would love to feature that to my network. Would you be okay with me sharing that with my network? Well, of course I'm okay with you sharing that with the network. So what they'll do is they, um, they'll they create their piece and then they'll do a feature where they link through to my website. I now feel really good. I've got really good trust in that company. They're doing me a favor. They're promoting me. What am I going to do? I go back to them and say, hey, how can I do that in return for you? So it, it creates partnerships and, and all kinds of things that lead to more people coming to your website. So how can you appear and feature in somebody else's email signature strip or have them email out to their list and say, hey, I read this great blog post today um, by uh, Saskia van der Reet. Um, I think you should read it a bit like Dina did with me today. Um, and I re refresh this regularly. Perfect. I mean, it is, it's is—it's just such a, a, a good thing to do. And you've got new stuff that you could be talking about all the time. So, you know, even if you see something and it inspires you, it, it just it just makes a difference, doesn't it? It just... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I just had a message come through there. I was trying to get rid of it. Um, okay, we're motoring on. We've got only about 18 minutes left, so let's focus. Um, uh, online communities. I kind of touched on that a little bit earlier, um, where, you know, just go into these online communities that have a really high concentration of your ideal customers and look at the, the challenges and the, the, the questions that they're asking and ask questions. So it was either yesterday or the day before I went into the group and I asked you, 
Um, what are some of the things that you want me to talk about? And Susan, one of the things that Susan says, how do I drive people to my website? So brilliant. Okay, that's what I'll talk about tomorrow. So I, I focused the content around answering a question for Susan. So go into your own groups, ask questions um, and be specific if you can. So I'm creating a product or I'm thinking of creating a program on or um, I had this experience uh, where um, this happened to me and as a result, I overcame it by doing X, Y and Z. Is it something you'd want to know more about? Uh, and they'll tell you if they want to know more about it, they'll let you know. And that way you can start creating content on that. And there's probably 10 different angles you could take for every different keyword. So just think of, of, about how you could do that. It's just, oh my gosh, so excited. I'm so excited for you. The things you're going to do as a result of this. Um, blog commenting. Um, I don't know if you're doing this, but when you go onto a blog and you, you read something that you really resonate with, and um, and you comment on the bottom and, and say something really positive, you know, provide insightful, thought provoking comments that get them to respond to you, you know, maybe ask a question in it, get the conversation going. Again, the more your name appears in that thread, when people read the, the blog post and then they read all the comments underneath it, hi Annemiek, um, then they they just there's they, good branding it's really good branding and it 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 puts positive energy um around your name so the more thought provoking the more um powerful your questions and answers are, are the the more you support the more you contribute uh, and you don't need to do this for a load of people. Maybe pick five influencers like we did at the very beginning of this call, the five influencers. What are they blogging about? What are they tweeting about? Where are they sharing their content? Be supportive because the more supportive you are to them, the more you're going to rent a space in their head and they're going to come to you when they get a request from one of their members or followers for the thing that you provide. You're going to be front of mind for that. So, okay, creating mini courses on Teachable for free. I mean, there's loads of different um, uh, online portals and online learning centers that you can create free content. Um, Teachable, I find, is a really, really good one because it doesn't cost you anything. You can sign up for an account for free. You can create a little mini course. You can get it up there, create a little quiz or questionnaire. You can put downloads, all kinds of stuff in there um, and do it for free. Hi, Michelle. So, um, so you don't even need to charge for that. You can charge and then Teachable take a cut from the, the courses that you sell. Uh, but even if you wanted to just do a couple of free mini courses, get them up into Teachable and it'd be really simple and the process is so simple that even I can do it and you create your content you upload it you get it there and then you share it out with your network so just you know it's another way of you creating just take one tiny little piece of knowledge that you have turn it into a little five step three step ten step mini course get it up into Teachable and all the way through it Make sure you're talking about, you know, and, and go to my website where you'll find blah, 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 right? So build your content around a content strategy that enables you to weave in. And by the way, if you go to my website, we've got this here. And then the next day, and, and I created another con um a download for you that's really, really perfect that will help you to blah, blah, blah. Um, and I uploaded that to the website last night. So if you go back to the website, um, type this in and um, and you'll go, you can go and get access to this now. So it gets another way of you driving people to your website and having them, um, you know, build really good trust currency with you. Because if you can get somebody to go through a little five step mini course, then you know it's a great way of qualifying them. If they can get through all five steps and take action on the things you're getting them to do as well, by the time you get to video five, you if they've got that far, then they're really interested in what you do. They're really interested in that topic and they wanna take it further. So drive them to your website to take it further. Drive them to something, give them their next step. Uh, why you want to comment, why you want comments on your blog. Brilliant, thank you, Saskia. Of course you will have written about this, the blog queen. I call her the blogpreneur. Um, okay, public speaking. Public speaking is obviously a brilliant way of you getting your message out there to many, many, many more people. But I would just advise you be strategic about it. I get invited to speak at a lot of events. And when I look at the audience that are going to be at these events, um, 
Sometimes they're not the right audience for me, but more often than not, it's the speaker lineup that I'm looking at. I want to know who is my brand being positioned with when I speak at that event. And I, I mean, I've got to, there was one event that I went to last year um, and I wasn't told about this person that was going to be speaking. So I thought there was just the three of us. And when I got there, it was four people. And this fourth person is someone that I, they have like zero credibility. They've been doing things that I don't agree with. And, um, and that, that's not good brand. Right. And so I turned around to the organizer and, and I, I said, if, I hadn't invited my own clients to be in this room today, I would be leaving this event now. But because I, I have promised that I'm gonna be here, people are expecting me to speak, and hi Judith, and um, you know, and I've got clients in the room, I'm gonna deliver on my promise, but please don't ever do this to me again. Just if you've got people that are speaking at the, at the events you're asking me to speak at, I'm taking my time out to come and deliver value. I won't have my reputation brought down to the same level as somebody that's doing something that, that is absolutely questionable in terms of how they don't deliver on their promises to their clients and take a lot of money for that. And so, you know, you've gotta think about that. When you're public speaking, Think about who the other speakers are. Who's going to be there? Are they building your credibility or are they dragging it down? So, so just want to put that little caveat in there. Public speaking is brilliant, but just seriously look at the lineup before you go. Um, you know, and and Google those people as well. Are they the living, breathing, walking, talking, eating, sleeping? Um, version of their brand credibility are they doing that uh, you know what's showing up online when you search for them and yes not everybody's perfect there might be a complaint there might be something that comes up but in that case look at how they deal with it if if you've brought your clients because basically the reason why someone would really want you to be speaking at their event is that you're going to be letting everybody know and then your clients will say oh you're going to that event I'll come and see you speak well, they know that you're going to bring that audience with you. And if you're speaking on a stage with somebody that you do not resonate with, then your ideal customers could be watching them and going and run into the back of the room to buy their thing. So to, please, please just, you know, do that little bit of investigation. Look at them um, first and put it out to your network. You know, these are the speakers that are going to be at this event. Um, do, you, is, do you know who they are? Just do your due diligence before you go and start building your personal brand credibility. In many cases, however, you'll find that it's completely credible. You'll go and you'll you'll bring some great great new clients uh, into your business, and the first thing they're going to do when you're on stage is they're going to Google you. So again, show up um, and shine. And if you can, um, ask for a recording of you speaking on stage as well, because that again is Google juice. You can get it up into your website, or if it's um, if they've put it up into YouTube and they, they won't give it to you, but they'll share the link, you can always write a blog post about it and stream the video into the blog post. So actually you're giving both of you traffic then, which is a good way of doing that. Repurpose your content. Um, like I guarantee you've got tons of content that you've put out over the years. Um, you've been sending emails for quite a while, I would imagine. So emails, if you've sent text messages, if you've sent messages on Facebook, uh, if you've given advice to someone, if you've created videos, there are ways that you can repurpose that content. So I'm going to give you five ways that you can repurpose the stuff you've already got. So go back to your blog posts and look at them and see, you know, how can you refresh them or how can you do some different things with them? So here are five things you can do. So the first thing is you could uh, create a podcast article. So without you even being on camera, you could do it on camera if you wanted to, but without, if you don't want to be on camera and you don't really want to build massive amounts of video, um, then podcasting is a great way for you to do that. Uh, leverage, my favorite word. Yes, my too, Andrew. Um, and so, you know, you could just literally, without being filmed, you could use your voice memos or uh, record it in Audacity or there's different um, different programs you can use, but really you could just use your, your own mobile phone. It's got all the equipment you need most of the time for you to be able to create this content and get it out there. So uh, you could just use voice memos or go into the app store 
and search for podcast and you'll find an app that you can record a podcast in. I've got several apps on my phone that I can record podcasts and I can share them in different channels and all kinds of things. So, you know, maybe that's a, a, an alternative way for you to do it. And just read the blog post. Read the blog post out loud in your own voice. And uh, that's, there you go. Now you've got that what that one piece of content that you've written. You can now turn that into a, another way of people finding you and driving traffic to your website. Um, what I'd advise you do if you are going to create a podcast is um, just record a, almost like a jingle. So record something that always goes on the front and the end of your podcasts app for podcast anchor brilliant thank you thank you Libna. um that's what i love about this this is like think tanking isn't it but <laughs> globally i love it um so uh yeah so i just recorded a um you know you are listening to a how to build a brand blah 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 and then at the end of it um thank you for listening see you next time or, or um visit www.howtobuildabrand.org for more um for more great podcasts blogs and content we've got program you know whatever it is that you want to put on the, the front and the end just you create something that works on the front and the end every single time because that way um you know you could have i just had someone on fiverr that just added it in for me um and so yeah i i had 200 videos on youtube that I, I reached out to a few different people on uh, Fiverr. I have an intro and outro, yes. Uh, thanks, Gospel. Um, and I reached out on Fiverr. I said, I've got 200 videos in YouTube. I want the audio copied out from them and turned into podcasts. <coughs> Here's the front and the back that I want on every single one. Um, how much will it cost to do this in a bulk load? Because obviously at a Fiverr per gig, that's going to cost me about a thousand dollars, and I don't want to pay a thousand dollars. So they, I was negotiating, and I had a guy come back, um, and he said, "Well, how much do you want to pay?" And I thought that's a dangerous question. So I went in with a really low price, thinking, "Okay, I'll offer a dollar per video, and he'll come back and then take it up." Well, I offered a dollar per video, and he came back. Uh, so I said two hundred dollars for two hundred videos. He came back and said, "Yep, yeah, brilliant. When do you want me to start?" <laughs> okay so he did all of that work for me and he, he turned it around in about three days I had 200 podcasts ready to go so you know you've already got a ton of content that you can turn into podcasts written uh, maybe you've written a book you could literally go page by page uh, a page a day and create a podcast a day that's going to massively build up your credibility and drive people to your website doesn't cost you anything and you're going to build just like millions oodles of uh, a brand trust credits that for sure uh, the second thing that you could do is create a short slide share as well so if you've got content on your website if you've written an article you could take out key parts of that article um, create really beautiful visual slides talk over the top of the slides um, so I use um, I use ScreenFlow to do my screen recording um, Jamie recommended one called use loom uh, um, so it's use use and then loom l o o o m dot com I believe um, if someone could check that out for me just check and see if that link works and post the link in here, maybe Lubna or Saskia, please. Uh, useloom.com is a resource that Jamie uses, and that's what she captures her screen with. Um, I know some people that don't find that too easy, so I use ScreenFlow. You could use Camtasia. Um, you might already have a screen capturing software on your on your screen, on your laptop. Um, there is also, if you've got an iPhone, you can now record your screen. Thank you, Libna. You can record your screen just by going to the options in your phone. So if you're scrolling through something on your phone, you can actually record yourself scrolling if you want to make a point of that and you could bring it in into a presentation or all kinds of things that you can do with that. Thank you, Saskia. So create a presentation, a short presentation or um, something that I was doing before I came on here. Uh, one of the events that I delivered, um, I think it was the January event in the UK. Um, I, I noticed that I was backing up a load of stuff onto my backup drive and I saw this file. I double clicked on it and it was me speaking at my event in, in, in the UK in January. And I thought, oh, I wonder what I was talking about. And so I, I clicked it and I just, I kept like going along the thing just to see what I was talking about. Well, I've just created five videos out of that. 
and I'll and and one uh, big video that's about forty five minutes long. Um, that is speaking specifically on um, how to build a personal brand, a business brand, a product or service brand, a character brand. I went through all the different types of brands that you might be building and how you can build each one of those individually, but also together and questioning what kind of brand are you building? So there's a whole um, workshop that I did on that during my day. And, um, and I also talk about brandalism, how to avoid it, how to commit it so you know if you're doing it and then what to do to avoid it. So you can go through and follow the 12 step process that I created that makes sure that you're doing everything that you're doing in your brand consistently. Sheesh, how many tips are you sharing? Uh, we've got 15. It's, this is an hour of power, Andrea. I share it every week. Um, today is 15 tips so that you can all go away and just pick one because not all of these are going to resonate with you. But even if you just pick one and, and commit to doing that for the next week, that will support you. Um, Wave is also a good one. Thank you, Gospel. That's awesome. Saskia, screen, uh, quickscreenshots.com. Brilliant. Fabulous. I love this. I love this. So um, you could also make a juicy list post of your evergreen content and its key points. So juicy highlights that you uh, from wording you've already created, take juicy highlights, turn them into nice little Canva graphics or something, you know, take little quotes, little things that you've said uh, can be turned into lots of uh, different repurposing um, and update an entire post and explain your new findings. So that's another way. Go back to your existing blog posts has something changed since then if you wrote about it a year ago you you can absolutely add value in a different way by now I'm sure so uh, you could go back and, and uh, just add some content to that article just repurpose about 25% of the article and Google will be looking at it like it's a new article so it's another way of getting that out there and finally this is the fifth of that hi Petra um of this section on repurposing, uh, we turn it into a quick five minute video. So, you know, I mean, you could even make a two minute video, but again, it's all content. It's content that you can create, drives loads of traffic to your website, all totally free, and you get that boost in uh, brand currency. And finally, tip number 15. Hi, Petra, you've joined us right at the very end of this. So make sure you go back and rewatch this because I've given tons of tips that, that will help you to drive free traffic to your website and I think this stuff is really simple and also really really awesome so uh, so go through and make sure you re-watch it um so finally I talked about five influencers at the beginning of uh, this call and I got you to write down five influencers you can think of who have your ideal clients in a really high concentration within their network. Um, what I'm going to ask you to do is really step that up a notch now and think of 20 influencers. So, and this really relates to you reaching out and we are, we're literally bang on time. It's just gone 8.01 here in the UK. So we're one minute over. I'm just going to finish this one tip because it's an important one. Create some content. So create a blog post or a video, get it up into wherever it is that you're going to share it and then reach out to 20 influencers in your network. It might be 20 customers might be 20 people that you'd love to really build a relationship with. And once you've shared that content, reach out to them and just say, you know, hey, Saskia, I just um, launched a, a video on topic name and I'd really appreciate it if you could share it with your network. And in return, I'd love to share some of your content to my network. So let me know how I can, how I can help and how I can serve you in return. And you'll find that most of them, if not all of them, will do that for you. If you've got a good relationship with them, no doubt they'll do that for you. If you if you don't know them, don't reach out to them and start asking them to do something like that. I would start by offering to do something for them. So I would say, um, you know, hi, gospel. Um, we don't really know each other um, yet, but I, I've got um, a whole audience of clients that I think 
really need what you provide and I would love to interview you or have you uh, create some content that I can send out to them that will, will drive them to your website. Well, when you do that for someone, they're going to want to do that for you as well in return. So yeah, turn five influencers into 20 influencers. Brilliant. Well done, Saskia. So there you go. That's your whistle stop tour today for the Brand Breakthrough Show, really focusing on how you can drive free traffic to your website and everything else that you're doing, your courses, your books, your promotions. It's just a phenomenal way of you being able to, um, hi Ashan, um, uh, to get in front of more people and influence and impact and, and inspire and uh, make a bigger difference in this world. So I'm super excited that we've had this time together and I feel very blessed that you've you've stuck around for all this time to to listen to the, the tips and things that we have. Uh, I'm gonna be back next week for the Brand Breakthrough Show. In the lead up to our conference, we've got a three day conference in London Gatwick from the 7th to the 9th of December. I'm super excited about that. Um, tip it, <laughs> thank you for your tips your marathon of 15 thank you thank you Saskia so yeah I can't wait to see you at the conference um we're not opening tickets to it to the public uh, until uh, we it's for brand builders club members only until Friday at midnight this week so and then there'll be about 20 tickets available to non brand builders club members so if it's something that you'd love to come and join us on please you know let me know and I'll send you the information we're not promoting it publicly it is invitation only and so uh, if you do want to know more about it you will need to reach out to me because I don't advertise our events. I, I keep quality super high at our events by making sure it is invitation only. So if you're interested, reach out and let me know. Peggy Lee, traffic value today. Oh, terrific value. <laughs> I thought you said traffic value. I thought that was going to be a great pun, a great uh, play on words. Um, it is my absolute pleasure. So I hope that you are go and have a, an amazing night, uh, day, morning, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. I am sending you loads of love and I look forward to seeing you same time next week for the Brand Breakthrough Show and let me know what you want me to speak on and uh, I, I will speak on it and if I'm not the expert in that, I will pull in the expert that is. So let me know what it is you want to know and we'll have that ready for you for next Wednesday. Take care. Love you lots. Bye-bye.